Hello and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you want to come on this journey day after day. And welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you're here, friend. Please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around and listen for a bit. And let's talk about this wonderful, wonderful gift. One of many, many gifts that the Lord has given us um, if we are believers in Christ. I'm so excited for us to talk about this today. Uh, I want you to know that I continue to pray for you. I continue to pray that the Lord will draw you closer to Him and give you more of a desire to know Him and to spend time with Him and to be intentional about your relationship with Him. Um, And I would ask that you please consider uh, sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors. Please subscribe. Please follow. Please um tell other people about it if you if you're able to click the little subscribe button or or click the uh, follow button if you listen on a podcast app uh, that helps other people to find it it just moves it up in the list just a little bit uh, if other people are looking for a daily devotional app Uh, but God will put it where he wants it to go so I'm not really concerned about that but sometimes it's helpful uh, for that reminder I also want to remind you that uh, I'm doing an accompanying uh, little Bible study journaling. I'm showing you kind of how I journal. It's more of a prayer journal based on each day's verse, and it's not too late to start. Even if you didn't start on January 1st, just get you a little calendar and just start a little bit. The point is not to make a pretty little book. The point is is to focus our heart and our minds and our thoughts on Him uh, very intentionally. And uh, if we do more than one thing with our body, if we're listening, if we're writing, if we have a visual thing, if we're listening, all these things together, uh, we focus more. I had a pastor that used to say the attitude of our body, meaning where we put our body, whether it's uh, face down on the floor when we're praying or our heads are bowed or on our knees or whatever, the attitude of our body often focuses our heart. And so that's why it's so important for us to uh, find other ways to really focus our heart and not be distracted. It is so easy to get distracted. I get distracted very easily. And I'm just wanting to encourage you. Uh, there's a video in the show notes that shows it's a nine minute video, kind of explains more the process, but then uh, for now I'm publishing little daily shorts on YouTube and on other social media outlets so you can follow along, and I would love for you to do that, and I'd love for you to let me know if you're doing that. All right, our verse for the day for, uh, what is today, January the 13th, 2024, comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, and it reads as follows from the English Standard Version. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Oh, friends, I love this. We go here a lot. We have been in this verse a lot over the last 740-something episodes. And so it is so important to know this. Uh, We are in this one of Paul's letters, one of the Pauline letters. He wrote 13 of the 27 that we have in the New Testament. We were just in one of his letters yesterday. Um, But we know that Paul wrote this because it says Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So right off the bat, we know that Paul wrote this. We know that he was an apostle. We talked about him yesterday and about his call and how you can uh, find that uh, recounting of Paul's calling um, in Acts chapters 9, 22, and 26 about how he was on the Damascus Road and he saw a great light from heaven and it was the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Lord Jesus, who was talking to him because Paul had been an opponent of the gospel. He had been an opponent of Christ. He did not think that this fit into God's plan. He, He was religious. He thought he was doing God's will, but God uh, was so pleased to give him um, 
to enlighten him, to open his eyes through blindness. Isn't that just the neatest way that God does that? Because he was struck blind while on that Damascus road and then was given his sight back three days later. Um, But I just love that. And I would invite you, if you haven't read that story or heard that story in a while, hop over to Acts chapter 9 and reread that. And uh, it will be a blessing to you, I think. But Paul was called to be an apostle. And when he wrote this letter to the Ephesians, this is one of the prison epistles. You know how yesterday we talked about Timothy and Titus were pastoral epistles. Epistle means letter. Um, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon are in the group called prison epistles. He wrote these from prison. He so very much cared about those that he uh, was sent to give this wonderful message to. And uh, he wanted to make sure that they knew what they had in Christ. It's thought that this church in Ephesus was started originally by Priscilla and Aquila. And you may recall, as we've talked about this before, that they were uh, two workers in uh, Corinth that Paul stayed with when he uh, was in Corinth for about 18 months. And after he left Corinth, he went to Ephesus and Priscilla and Aquila went with him. Uh, but he was he pastored a church there for about three years, and later he sent Timothy to go back there. That's what uh, we read about in that letter of First Timothy. But he cared so much about these Ephesians, and I love what he uh, what we see in this letter to the Ephesians. The first half of the letter, and it's just six chapters, uh, the first half of the letter really talks about who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ. So it's doctrine in um just so we can know. It's our belief system. It's so wonderfully laid out. But the second half is, now that we know this, how do we walk? How do we live? How do you navigate this world that is against you? (laughs) Um, And so, oh, friends, there is just treasure upon treasure upon treasure in this letter. And I love it. And I would encourage you to read it and reread it because there is just so much, so much here. Um, But Paul says he said he was writing to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. He knew it was difficult. And there's such an encouragement. Oh, it's just full of encouragement. But let me open up here and uh, let you hear how he opens this letter leading up to our verse for the day. Because I would invite you, if you have never done this or if you've done it before, do it again (laughs) if it's been a while. If you go through this first chapter, actually all the way into the second chapter, because it talks about how we are saved in that second chapter, about that it's by grace through faith. It's not of anything that we do. And um, it's just such a blessing. Uh, But if you can spend time sometime to go in this first chapter and make a note of these blessings that we have for those of us who are believers um, in Christ um, and just park on those and think about those and thank God for those. Oh, it is just, it's so wonderful to be reminded about these. And we need to be reminded so that we will live in a way that is worthy of what has been given to us and what has been done for us. But listen to this beginning in verse 3 of chapter 1. Paul's, Paul's giving praise to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And I just have to stop there. Um, Sometimes when you're studying, if you will slow down and underline or circle or highlight the everys and the alls, it will be, um, it will just uh, bless your heart. (laughs) And it's so amazing. We tend to skip over those, but slow down and notice those. But look at this, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. So we've been given every spiritual blessing. We've been chosen. 
In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. We've been adopted to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. And oh, listen to this, friends. In him, we have redemption. In other words, we've been bought back through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. Do you ever imagine that you have been lavished on by the God the Father? We have. His word says it. Um, Making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. And here's our verse for the day. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And I'm going to read just past that. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So we're chosen, we're adopted, we've been given all these, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has lavished his, the riches of his grace on us. We have been redeemed, we've been forgiven, all of these things. And if that wasn't enough, he's given us an inheritance. So he's given us those things here. But we also have an inheritance, something kept in heaven for us, something that we look forward to, and that's eternal life with Christ and God the Father. And friends, that is just huge. There's not even a word to describe that. There's not enough words. And He gave us his Holy Spirit. He sealed us with his Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee or the down payment of our inheritance. It's just a little deposit to let to give us a glimpse of the things that we're going to have. And that is just such a neat thing. If you look up what guarantee uh, means, it's like a deposit or a down payment. And so I want you to think about that when you think about what God has given us in a in the person of the Holy Spirit. And we are sealed with that Holy Spirit, if you read that. And this is how it came about. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, and this is the process, you hear the word of truth. And remember what uh, Paul wrote in Romans, in Romans ten seventeen, where he said, so faith comes from hearing. That's where we get our faith and hearing through the word of Christ. So faith, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, that good news of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So we hear that truth which is the gospel, which tells us what is the gospel. The gospel is that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. None of us is righteous, no, not one. But God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to this earth, Who and he walked a sinless life while on this earth. Um, And he did that to uh, be the sacrifice, to pay the penalty for our sins, the penalty that we owe because of our sins against a holy God. So he was sinless. He walked sinless here, and then he was crucified on that cross, and he died. He was placed in a tomb. He was there for three days, and on that third day, he was resurrected in full bodily form. He was seen by many, and then he ascended back to heaven where he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming again. That good news of the gospel is that he died for you and for me and for the whole world to take care of that debt that we owed. And so <clears throat> that is the the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. That is the good news. But if we don't believe that, if we don't confess that that is true, if we don't uh, ask for forgiveness from our sins and turn away from our old way of life and turn to him and ask him to handle it all, um, then we're not saved. But if we do, 
if we do believe, if we believe in him, then we are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Now, if you look up what that word seal means in the Greek, and I did this by looking up in my Bible Hub app and looking in the interlinear Bible. You can look both in the New Testament and the Old Testament and the New Testament. It will show you the, the Greek words as they were originally written in the order that they were written. And then you can click on those and look up the definitions. And, oh, friends, it's such a wonderful thing to do when you're doing a word study and you're parking uh, in a verse or in a passage of Scripture. But that seal, uh, it's sfragizo, uh, <laughs> and it's to set a seal upon. And in the ancient uh, times, they would have a, a, a seal that... They would set on documents or on pieces of property. Um, and the, for instance, the, the documents, they may have a, a piece of wax and then the person would have a signet ring, ring. And then they would put their, uh, impression of their signet ring on that seal to, to certify who whose it belonged to. Um, and so we read about the seals being broken, uh, that who is worthy that, uh, to take the seal and open the seal in Revelation. And Jesus was the only one that's worthy of that. But um, this sealing attested to the ownership of what was inside. And so if we are his, if we believed in him and we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, that is one of God's way of ways of attesting to whose we are. We are His. And when you stop and think about that, about what a blessing that He would give us that Holy Spirit to seal us, to show uh, all of the principalities and everyone here and everyone in the spiritual realm whose we are, that's pretty amazing, friends, and it's something to thank him for. Um, but we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And that Holy Spirit of promise is a guarantee. It's a deposit of, of, of the inheritance that we have until we acquire possession of it, of that inheritance of eternal life that we have. And not only is it just, is it that deposit and that guarantee, but we've talked about, we did this a lot at the end of last month, and I would invite you to go back and listen to those podcast episodes if you haven't already, where we talked about um, having the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are other things besides just attesting ownership that we have with God's Holy Spirit. We have the uh, the gifts with which he gives it, uh, those things that he gives us to do the work that he wants us to do for his glory that we can't do on our own. It's all of him. And then we have fruit of the Spirit, evidence that that Spirit resides within us, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so I would encourage you today to park here, to read this over and over again, and to thank him that he would set his seal of ownership upon us. And because we are sealed, Nobody can touch our soul. If you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, you are his. That cannot be taken away. And so give him thanks, give him praise, and may we walk in a manner worthy of uh, that which we've been called for his glory. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.